Y'all remember the time that Zimbabwe's waters was infested with mermaids? Just me. Get your popcorn. YouTube. And for those who do not know me and are new here, hi, my name is Noah. I am a spiritualist and on my page we talk about death, true crime, haunted people, places, and things, spiritual reparations, and how you can fuck around and find out. If you are not subscribed, I encourage you to. If you're not following me over on TikTok, I definitely encourage you to. And turn your notification bells on, please. Before I start today's episode, I just wanted to give a heartfelt ashe to my patrons. My patrons are the best. And for those who are unaware, I do teach spirituality on Patreon. And I created Patreon over a year ago, but didn't start inviting people or even putting any content up until about October, maybe even November. But I created Patreon for people who are new spiritualists and wanted to start their journey. And I also created it so that I could pay for my first set of initiation. And this weekend, I did my first initiation. And here are my beautiful beads. And I'm so excited and so grateful and almost indebted to my patrons because they made this process super quick, easy, and seamless. They've even been sending me congratulatory Evo um, cash apps and different things like that just because they let me down. And I love them. So shout out to y'all. Thank you, Ashe. But yeah. Zimbabwe has a very terrible mermaid problem and has since the early 2000s. They also have a problem with fairies slash fays amongst other things, but that's for another video. One mythical creature at a time, y'all. We have talked about mermaids extensively on this page and I really hope that you don't think that mermaids are singing for love and wanting to climb up on the shore for feet because they're anything but what you see on Disney. Mermaids are said to be one of the most dangerous predators in African and Caribbean culture. And before y'all get in the comments, I'm not saying that Zimbabwe did not have mermaids because they've absolutely always had mermaids. This shit is real. I'll be trying to tell y'all, but y'all don't want to listen. Y'all don't want to listen. But what I am saying is that in this area of Zimbabwe, mermaids were not the mythical creatures they had to deal with. They had other battles to fight at the time. So before I even start my story, let me give you the tea on mermaids, la sarin, these creatures that live in the waters. We need to get some context here before. Now, mermaids are not just an African thing, but they are spoken most about in African and Caribbean culture. We have a lot of water spirits such as Yemanya, Mamiwata, Lastarin, all of those type of spirits that we praise and ask for help and we feed and all those good things. Those are the good mermaids of the world, of the spiritual world, I should say. But we also have sirens that don't really want to add any real meaning or give any good spiritual currency as well. In the book of Enoch that may or may not be in the Bible, mermaids were women who laid Human women that laid with the watcher angels that were sent down. And for this, they were condemned to be la sarin, sirens, mermaids for all of eternity. In Greek mythology, they were bird-like women who lured sailors to their deaths. Mermaids have always been a part of history. So much so, Christopher Columbus said that he laid with a mermaid but they said it was a manti or I don't know okay I don't look up his history because his history erased minds so 
When I say mermaids have always been a thing and we always have sightings of them, I'm telling you this because if everybody says the sky is blue and you go outside and the sky is blue, what are you going to say? That the sky is pink? Everybody ain't lying. But specifically in Caribbean African culture, sirens, mermaids, they are not good creatures. They lure you into the waters. They kidnap you, sometimes even turn you into a slave um, and you just you're done for but we also have people that think that mermaids are a blessing to them that they give you ashe because those same kidnapped victims sometimes will come back years later holding very very great power now they may have freckles and red hair when they come back but they come back as like a high priestess high priest type of energy knowing all the secrets any magic that one needs to know as a spiritualist practicing voodoo or um, ifa or whatever african spirituality it may be they are said to come back with those powers if they let you come back and that's a big if they're also said to have compassion for your loved ones who may miss you. If your loved ones know that you've been kidnapped by a mermaid, sometimes a mermaid will allow for your loved ones to come visit you, but you are completely asleep. You can't talk, you can't move, they could just see you and then they take you back underwater. It, it's unhinged. I've heard also that if you are kidnapped, and they do release you, you have to keep feeding them. You can't just run off into the sunset and act like none of it ever happened. You will always be in debt to them. I've also been told that if you are kidnapped by a mermaid and you are a man, biologically, that you will be their toy and you probably will have a few mermaid children at the bottom of the ocean. They also can act as sort of a shapeshifter or a skinwalker, depending on what you believe. Because you can see a god-awful, beautiful woman walking on land and you follow her home and you're going into the ocean. And whenever she gets underwater, she's going to reveal her true self. It's been said many, many times, mermaids are not pretty. They are ugly as hell. Well, us spiritualists that believe in mermaids encourage you not to wear any jewelry into the water if you go to the ocean or rivers or lakes. They will snatch your shit. Anytime I get into the ocean or a river, I make sure I take my wedding ring off. I make sure I take my unk slash pendulum off. I am going in just with a swimsuit because shiny things attract them. And it's either you or the jewelry that's going to go. I'd rather not. And it's not even just jewelry. They like Apple Watches as well. I know someone that has lost an Apple Watch mysteriously. Y'all know how Apple Watches loop in and loop out while in the ocean or a river or whatever, wherever they were. So now that we have a better understanding what La Sarin, mermaids, sirens, whatever you want to call them, what they really are and what they mean to people that are in the practice or even just Caribbean African. Let's get into how Zimbabwe ended up with a horrible infestation of them. So let's go back a little bit, but forward at the same time, if that makes sense, it will in just a second. In February of 2012, the Water Resources Minister had to explain why they all of a sudden halted the construction of a dam. His name was Minister Samso Pepper Nokoma, and he had to bring out a whole like press conference of why the dam had stopped being built because this dam was very critical to the water sources of the people of Zimbabwe. And it wasn't just one dam, okay? It was not just one, it was multiple sites. The workers at the said dams of Manikalan, Gakar, and the Midlands have been complaining about being hounded, 
harassed by something in the water. These workers were hired to update the pumps to make sure that they were working properly and to just make sure everything was copacetic with the dam. But while they were working, they were having experiences that they could not explain. Things in the water that they believe to be mermaids. And the reason why they believe it is because they seen them with their own eyes. Let's just think about this for a second. It's a whole construction crew who does work like this on the regular. They're all saying that they have experienced something or seen an actual mermaid. And some said they don't know if it was a mermaid or a water spirit. There are differences, but this is giving mermaid in my humblest opinion. But whatever was in that water ran off all the construction workers and they vowed to never come back until they appeased the spirits or the mermaids. What is appeasing the spirits or mermaids? That's giving offerings, sacrifices, whatever it is to keep the mermaids at bay. They weren't coming back to that site until somebody that knew what they were doing were going to do this for them so that they could stay safe and return safely home to their families. So once they said, you know what, I'm not doing this, peace out, I'm done. There's mermaids and water spirits in that water and they're trying to get us, they all resigned. And so those in charge hired a group of foreigners. Foreigners, not from Zimbabwe, not even from the continent of Africa to come in and do the work for them. But when these foreigners arrived and started doing the work on this dam and its pumps and everything else, they too was like, I'm not dealing with it. I'm not fooling with it. Something's in that water. Now, those in charge thought, okay, well, they're foreigners. They won't be exposed to the same belief system. They won't even know anything about this mermaid debacle. But these people experienced the same shit. And it's not like they hired one group of people from a certain country. These were foreigners from various countries, continents, whatever. And they still were saying the same shit get somebody else to do it. And there were different complaints from these foreigners saying that rocks were being thrown from the water. People were almost dragged into the water, something grabbing them, trying to drag them deeper into the water. It was crazy. Some of the foreigners even vanished or had been chased off of the work site. When I tell y'all it was a whole issue it was an issue. Some of the pumps stopped working at the same time. So they went down there and reported seeing even more weird shit because there was nothing wrong with the pumps. They weren't damaged, they weren't destroyed. It was just a weird phenomenon where all the pumps to this dam stopped at the same time. This was very concerning for the workers because this dam was providing damn near all the water to this community. So if the pumps are down or if they can't finish the dam, how are people supposed to get water? So of course this sparked conversation and like the native workers, they vowed to never go back down there again. <laughs> they said, peace out, we're done. Get someone else to do it. So now the government committee is like, well, what are we going to do? Because we try using our community, our natives to fix this issue, to finish the dam, to upkeep it. And now we've hired foreigners and they're like having the same issue that the natives had. Can you imagine the conversation in this committee styled type of environment? They're all sitting around like, okay, well, the natives saw the mermaid. The foreigner saw the mermaid. What do we do? So they decided to hold a traditional style ritual to appease the water spirits. They called in a bunch of spiritual healers that were very higher ups in the practice. 
and started the process of appeasing the mermaids. And one of the rituals that they did for the mermaids was brewing a traditional style beer. And this actually worked because when the workers went back to the dam, they said they had no problems, that it felt much better. No one was getting dragged into waters. There were no rocks thrown. When I went down and looked at the pumps, they didn't feel like someone was there with them. It worked. End of story, right? Everything is good. The mermaids are appeased. They don't have no more issues. Wrong. Five years later, in 2017, there was more drama. And this was five years damn near to the date. In February of 2017, locals reported seeing mermaids. Now, they hadn't really seen them like that since the appeasing ritual that was done in 2012. So to see a mermaid sunbathing and basking on a rock, they knew something was about to go down. And these sightings were only reported after two young people, good swimmers, passed away at the dam. And these two people were herding cattle and horses. Cattle and horses. And they passed away somehow in the water. And it actually was three young people, but two of them perished and one of them survived. And this was the survivor's story. He said that they were out herding cattle as usual, and the two that perished saw something shimmering underneath the water. And so they're thinking it's a big fish, right? They're thinking this is going to be dinner for the next however many days. So they jump in, right? And they pull out a big shiny rock. And they're showing their surviving friend like, oh my God, look what we just found and then they're snatched back underneath water. Authorities in the area refused to even comment on what they thought this was. They didn't even want to say it out loud because the word mermaid in this community is like a dog whistle. Everyone is going to go into a state of panic. But the locals were no fools. They already kind of knew what was going on because the two high schoolers that were killed in the water who were very, very good swimmers. Because remember, all of this area is surrounded by water. So everybody's a good swimmer. Reported seeing a mermaid a few weeks prior. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody kind of knew what was what. Even the chief of police in this town refused to go anywhere near the water. He said it was creepy, it was eerie, and he had a terrible, terrible feeling about it. So he even stayed away from it. And his wife actually had the same sentiment, but she had a bit more tea to him. She also didn't like going by the dam because she said she witnessed the day that the mermaids showed up. They weren't always in this area at that construction site at the dam. They just magically appeared one day. She said sometime after construction started, she was out and about near the water and she seen a big whirlwind of some sort and this whirlwind was huge and it was moving towards the lake and whenever it got to the lake she heard loud splashes as if something was being dropped into the lake and then someone else a totally separate party not in the same area as the chief's wife was washing clothes and seeing the mermaids being dropped in by this whirlwind this story is crazy. Follow me though. So then the chief says shortly after this whirlwind that his wife and another woman witnessed happened. People would go missing. You would see laundry sprawled across the lake's banks and it looked like they were just all of a sudden abandoned. And obviously if someone is washing their clothes in a lake, they're not just going to leave their clothes and be nowhere to be found. It didn't make sense. Their son also had an experience with the mermaids or what he suspect to be with the mermaids at the lake. He was fishing there and he took the family dog. He turned his head away for a split second and heard the dog yelp. And then the dog was nowhere to be found. Now, honorable mention for this said story about the dog. This 
body of water is home to a lot of crocodiles. So a lot of people who weren't believers believe that a crocodile got the dog. But when he went home and told his father the story about his dog, the father was like, why would you even take the dog there? Remember, his, his dad is the chief of police. Why would you take the dog there knowing that mermaids hate dogs? None of the activity reported by the locals, the two high schoolers who are very good swimmers, mysteriously disappearing, surprised the locals because all of this seemed a little too familiar. The activity actually started in June of 2000. This dam was built in the early 1990s. Two men were killed trying to catch a mermaid. Now I need everybody to pause because you're like, okay, people drown every day, right? Of course they do. But you have to think about it. Like I said earlier, these people grew up born and raised in these waters. And the water that the two men drowned in was that of maybe three or four feet. This was highly unusual. And then on top of that, that's where the elephants would drink and bathe. It was not anything that was super deep or the elephants couldn't get in it. When the dam was originally built in the 1990s, locals were very taken aback at where they decided to build it because the officials that approved everything for the dam knew that the area was a very spiritual place. It was a spiritual hub. It was filled with pythons that the locals refused to kill because they belonged to spirits, deities, what have you. Ancestors were said to live there. Fays and other mythical creatures. They were really surprised that this is the place that they chose to fuck around and find out. It was a lot of problems even back then. Once the dam went up, it was like on and cracking in that area. So a group of religious people, and I say religious because I don't know the exact name, but it's a group of people from Zimbabwe who synchronize African traditional religions and Christianity together. It's not voodoo, it's called something else. I could not pronounce the word, so I won't disrespect, but... They went into the waters where this dam is to pray over it. And the leader who they called the prophet reported fighting with a mermaid because he brought in a red clay pot and mermaids are said to hate the color red. And he fought and he tussled with that mermaid. But you know, he wasn't right in his spirit either because he got out the water and this water was so small that they considered it a pool. They called it a pool. He got out and then told his churchgoers, his followers, to continue to pray. And they did so for eight hours. So stuck in a trance that they didn't realize that two of their congregation members were missing. Their bodies were found at two separate times. They searched the waters several times. And it's such a small pool of water that there's no way they would have missed the bodies the first time. Well, basically, since 2000, really even in the 90s, but it piped up in 2000, mermaids have been unhinged. They've been causing havoc and just being miscreants in the water of Zimbabwe. Even as recent as 2021, three men who were doing a ceremony in those waters disappeared. And the families of these three men were doing their own rituals once they went missing to try to appease the mermaids, trying to give offerings in hopes that these men will return back home safely. And then two more villagers who were attempting to rescue the men also disappeared. <laughs> but after a prayer session and a couple of rituals, they were returned a week later. Seven days. You can't even go seven minutes underwater. Listen, regardless of what you believe and what you do not believe, there has to be some truth in the existence of mermaids. And if I were everyone, I'd be careful. But what do y'all think? Do you think that the Caribbean and African countries have an issue with mermaids. Of course, mermaids are all over the world and they inhabit every type of water, lakes, streams, rivers, oceans, 
all that other stuff. But I want to hear your opinion and your mermaid story, your paraki, what your ancestors have passed down and told you or your mama or your daddy or your whoever. That is all for today, YouTube. And remember, if you are looking to speak with me live, I am live every Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time doing the Calls from Beyond live call-in show with Austin from the Bizarre Junkies channel. If you're not following them, follow them. And if you have a spooky, cryptid, spiritual preparation, UFO story, comment now. I want to hear it. And if you want me to cover something on my channel, go ahead and comment down below or give me an email. Send me an email. Y'all do good, be good, and stay safe.